Some of Morten Andresen's earliest memories are of heading to town with his mother in his native Denmark to have his feet measured for a new pair of clogs. And I can still recall the smell of the leather and the wood. And we came back a few days later and here's a brand new pair of clogs. Clogs still all he wears. He swears by them. Instead of just walking flat, it's massaging using all of the muscles in, in your feet. So five years ago, when the elderly gentleman in Denmark that Morton ordered his final pair from retired, he found a toehold of inspiration. If you want to have exactly what you want to be able to present, then you really have to do it yourself. A half century and entire career later, the former engineer has put his heart and soul into the creation of Scandic footwear, bringing back to life age-old wood and leather artisanry in the basement of his home in Bedford. From Denmark, we can trace clock manufacturing back to the 1600s. In early 2012, he worked on the fundamentals of the engineering side, within months had a prototype, sold his first order in Brooklyn, then focused on New England, his home for near three decades. Four years later, they are taking off. We offer three different heel heights, so two ends, two and three quarter ends, and 3.3 ends for, for a super high heel. Uh, and then all the different types of leathers, all the different types of styles, and all the different colors. So it, you very quickly come up with a staggering number of different styles. This has turned out to be probably the best-selling product in the line here in New England. And what's it called? This is called the Plymouth. <laughs> Plymouth, New Hampshire. Point. Plymouth, New Hampshire, exactly. So all of, uh, all of the Scandic clocks are named after towns throughout New Hampshire. And you said this gorgeous one right here, what's this one? This is Keen. Mostly clogs for women. Sandals, shoes and boots, everything made to order. Most through New England shoe stores and boutiques, but some through his website. This one hasn't been named yet. This is a brand new one that we're just introducing for, for this spring. So this sling back clock. So huh. that could be the rye. Yeah. You know? It could be. A beachy kind of one or rye sling back. There you yeah. go. Why not? <laughs> no one uh, in the clock world, anywhere in the world, have anything like this. So this is a completely new concept for us where we are combining yarn and leather. Wow. We're going to call these our hippie clocks. Hippie, huh? Yes. I can see why. Each one handmade. He walked us through the detailed process that starts with wooden bottoms from Sweden that he sands and varnishes twice. It gives it a look almost like a piece of finished furniture. Um, and it also uh, makes the wood much stronger. Then comes the leather, most of it from California. And you can see this is a top grain. How do I know that? Well, I can tell just looking at it. You see, you can see the hair follicles. Wow. Each clog style has its own pattern tool. The leather piece is cut precisely on a giant press. The exact shape and cut then moves on to a skiving machine where he thins the edges of leather upper and trim. I retained the full thickness in the middle, so we're gonna get a nice curved shape to it, which looks great once it's all put together. The two are bonded with glue to form the dome of the clog, which is then stitched on a reconditioned Iron Singer sewing machine. Thread ends then trimmed and burned, ready for attaching to the wooden base. So this is an American Senko staple gun, converted to foot pedal operation so I can have both hands free. One of the hallmarks of Scandic clocks is the alignment of the staples. Next, he picks the right-sized shoe last or form that's heated and pushed into the leather that's dampened. And now the trick is to get the last aligned correctly. Every step very hands-on. 
craftsmanship in every detail, wood and leather emerging as a one-of-a-kind piece of art. So there you have it. That's the final shape. Each clog sits overnight so moisture can escape. Then into the oven. Yes, the oven for about an hour. Then once the leather cools down, that shock effect between the difference between hot and cold, that actually locks the fibers in the leather. So now the shoe will retain its shape. All natural materials, handcrafted and designed locally. But at some point, for sure, uh, the business is going to outgrow uh, the home base here. So at some point, we're looking at uh, perhaps moving into Manchester. I would love to be in one of the old mill buildings down there. An age-old craft rooted in Denmark, getting a foothold in the Granite State. So hopefully we can turn this into really quite a good business and employ people here in New Hampshire. Come and help me make some clocks.